So what if you've been playing with this model for a while and you're like, you know, it's great, but it's really simple. I really want to look at diseases that might have an environmental component, diseases that might spread through, say, germs on a doorknob or something like that, right? Um, then we could, for instance, create an environmental version of the model. So in this model, each of the individuals leaves behind a trace of the disease where they were. And if a new agent enters that, that area, before the decay of the disease runs out, then they become infected, right? And so, you know, initially we just set the disease decay to zero, which allows us to have um, individuals who can't have any environmental effect, but then we could increase that over time. So, you know, we could go all or increase it for different runs, right? So in this case, there's, you know, a very powerful disease, right? That sticks around in the environment for quite a while, right? Um, but let's, let's explore then, maybe we want, one of the things we want to explore is what's the relationship uh, to the environmental decay in the system, okay? So we can bring up the environmental experiment that's in the behavior space. Um, actually, let's look at it real quick first. And what you can see is that what it does is it varies that disease decay from zero to 10. Um, since the variant environmental, by the way, it's gonna run it 10 times and look at ticks. So we're just gonna to look to see how does environmental decay affect the time to 100% infection. So we can run this model, right, as is. Go ahead and save the data off to our desktop, right? And of course, turn off update view. Oh, and there it goes, it's already done. Uh, so let's go into R and look at that data. Okay, so here we are back in R. Uh, and we can load in the data as we were before. Of course, we have to change the file name. Uh, and, you know, let's double check to see what the data looks like. Uh, it looks exactly like the data we've been looking at when we looked at the time to 100% infection. So we can just use the same cal names data that we were using for the previous data. Uh, and then, you know, we want to aggregate in the same way, but instead of aggregating by the initial number of people, now we're aggregating by disease decay, right? do everything almost exactly the same way we did when we first looked at this data. And of course, we get our warnings because of the fact that some of those variables aren't um, numeric data, right? And then we can kind of look at the overall results and you can see disease decay, mean, and standard deviation. It seems like there's definitely some trends here, right? But maybe they're bottoming out around here. In fact, it tends, it's going up you know, by a little bit, but not in a statistically significant way. Uh, and so then we can just plot that data, right? And we can, you know, of course, start by plotting all the data, plot uh, disease decay on the x-axis, the last tick on the y-axis, uh, time to 100% infection versus environmental decay, right? And we get the following results. And like I said, you know, it seems like they're, you know, having any environmental effect seems to matter, but after some time, the environmental effect kind of peters off a little bit in terms of the amount of effort, that it, it, the amount of effect it has on the time to 100% infection. Uh, just to be sure, we can do the, the error bar trick, right, and look at in terms of the aggregate, the mean data and the standard deviation data as well. And of course, you know, like I said, we probably want to actually convert to standard error in some of these cases, but this kind of gives us some description of what's going on within the data. So there you go. There's, there's you know, just a check to see, like, we can look at not only the actual, um, uh, the, you know, a standard model, but we can change what the dependent, the independent variable is and look at the relationship uh, there as well. One small note before we get off the environmental model. One of the things you might want to be able to do with this data, right, and it's not necessarily this particular version, but other versions of environmental models you might look at, uh, you might want to look at kind of the patterns that come out of that, right? So if you were able to simulate where the spread might be happening, maybe you can think about different things like uh, vaccination routines or something like that to influence the spread of that disease. So imagine rather than having this be on this arbitrary two-dimensional grid, it's instead placed on some of the GIS data that we talked about last time, right? Then you might look at, well, does it make sense to vaccinate a ring? And you can actually build into the model a um, new tools to look at those kind of interventions in a spatial context. In fact, you might be able to export the data from NetLogo to a GIS data set and then analyze the patterns of what kind of data you see within a GIS tool, like um, some of the ARC uh, products that are out there, the Esri products out there, like ArcSoft products, right? Uh, so that would give you some ability then to look at the data, the output of the data, to analyze it in a GIS context. Now, 
Um, that's kind of beyond the scope of this particular course, but we definitely, uh, if you want to email me and I'm happy to send you in the direction of some research that's been done in that space.